Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video I'm going to build a dog image finder app. So what we will be doing is using the dog API over here where we have a list of dog breeds and their subbreeds and what we will do is fetch from this API to print out an image finder app. The app will be using react.js and typescript. We will be using Redux for state management. We will be fetching the data with the npm package Axios. We will also be using styled components as we always do with these builds. And finally, we will be adding unit tests in there using Jest and React testing library. So the build has a few parts to it. First off, this button here, if we hover over it and we click, we make a get request to the dogs API to fetch all of the breeds. So if I press the button first off we have a mandatory field which we need to select so in this field we are fetching all the breeds for the dog so if i click the drop down we can see here we have a list of breeds in here if i was to click on a breed that has a subbreed within it for example the australian then a new field would pop up saying subbreed and then we can select the relevant subbreed for the dog here and then the amount of images that we want to select for example five so what i am doing behind the scenes is i I am dispatching actions to our Redux store, which we will explain later on. Essentially, we are giving the Redux store a state for the breed, the subbreed, and the number of images so that when we select search dogs, we then make a fetch API request to the dogs API to fetch the dogs data. So if I press search now, we now have five images and a UI which is going to be named a results component that fetches five different images for the relevant breed of Australian Shepherd. So if I was to now change this to a Beagle for example, because this doesn't have a subbreed, then what we will do is just select the number of images. So if I choose 10 this time and press search, we now get the 10 results here and the UI on the right also updates as well. Also, if I was to press the reset search button, what will happen is it will dispatch an action to the reducer that will reset the state as it was to the initial state of the application. So if I press reset, we're back to this beginning where it sets the select a breed input back to select breeds and then the default number of images, which is always going to be one. So let's get started and create this project. Okay, so what I'm going to do is install React along with the template for TypeScript and style component. So if I paste in my code, so I've got npx create React app and the name of the app, which is dog app dash yt dash dash template of TypeScript. So if I press enter, this will then install all of the dependencies required and it sets up TypeScript for me as well. So now that's installed, I'm just going to cd into the dog app. So cd dog app dash yt. And then if I just open the folder and you can see the files here on the left now. So I'm just going to open a new terminal now and I'm just going to run npm start. And as you can see, we have the normal React boilerplate when we create React app. So I'm just going to do a few things. So first off, I'm going to check my node version. So all you do to check that is node space dash v so i'm currently on node version 14.19 if you wanted to change your node version there's a package called mnvm where you can change the versions so if you wanted to use another one you would type nvm use and then the version number if you don't have the version number then you can install it with nvm install so instead of npm, I'm going to change my package lock. So I'm going to delete it and I'm going to use yarn. So I've deleted the package lock.json and instead type in yarn and press enter. So what this will do is it will create a yarn lock file for me. If you don't have yarn installed globally on your machine, you will first need to do that as well. I also want to add in style components. So yarn add style components like so. And if I press enter, and because we are using styled components, we also want to import the types. So that is yarn add as a dev dependency at type style components and press enter. So now if I go into my index.tsx file in here, we need to wrap the app in the theme provider. But before we do that, I'm going to create a folder structure in my source folder. So in here, I'm going to add a few folders. 
the first folder is the components folder where my components will lie. I'm also going to create a lib folder. So this will handle all of the external libraries that I install into the application. I'm going to have a styles folder where I'm going to have the main styles for the application here. And finally, I'm going to have a folder for all of my TypeScript types. So in my root render, what I'm going to do is import the global style from style components. And I am also going to wrap the theme provider around my app. So theme provider from styled components, which takes in a theme. It is equal to theme, which we will declare in our lib folder there. And then the app is going to move within the theme provider. I am also going to import the global style in my theme file in the lib directory. So in lib, I'm going to create a new file named theme.ts. And what I'm going to do is bring in what I already have in here. We have some fonts which we will import later on. So I'll just comment them out for now. So essentially we are importing create global style from style components. And then as you can see here, we are exporting the global style in here. We have a couple of fonts that we are declaring, which we will again look at later on in the video. Here are the body styles with Poppins regular as the main font family and Poppins bold for any h1 tags we also have a theme with colors on there so we will be able to access the theme colors via props so now if i save and then i need to go back into my index.tsx and import in the global style and also the theme from the lib.theme as well so now i'm getting the following error for the font so if i just uncomment this out and then also uncomment this out and we have font files that I need to pass in and import. So within my styles, I'm going to create a new folder and name this font. And within font, I'm going to drag in my font. So I'll just drag them in here. And these will be in the description also. As you can see, there's two files here and they are both OTF files. So we can see here TypeScript is raising an error. So the error says cannot find module or its corresponding type declarations. So what I need to do is in the package JSON level, create a new file and this will be named font.t.ts. And in here, all we need to do is declare the module as OTF. So any font files that we have, we're going to use the OTF files for them. So now if I save, what I also want to do is move the fonts D ts file within my styles in the same folder as the poppins so now if i restart my server and now you can see the poppins font is now loading so now all we need to do is remove this boilerplate code so if we go into the app now and now I want to remove everything within the header and i also want to remove the div class name app and i want to now create a container this will be a global container so the whole app will use this container so what i need to do is create a style.ts file within the styles folder so going back into here and create a new file called styled.ts and in here i'm going to bring in some styles so first off we're going to import style from style components and the container that we are bringing in for is the style.main. It has a display of flex, a line item center, a flex direction of column, justify content of center, a margin auto, which means left and right, it will have equal spacing on both sides, a margin of bottom so it doesn't touch the bottom of the page, and a background color of the props.theme, that background, which is declared in the lib folder here. So now if I go back into my index.tsx into my app, what I want to do is import the container from the styles folder like so. So now if I save all, the React boilerplate has gone and now we have the container set. I'm now going to render a h1 saying dog app. And as you can see, the styles from the theme.ts are now pulling through. So I am getting an error, which is import logo. We don't need that, so I'll just delete it and I will also delete the corresponding file. So now if I save, that error has now gone. 
We would also need to update the tests, but I'll leave them until the end of the video. So the first child, what I want to do for the container is instead of a H1, I'm going to paste in the description that I had at the start of the video. And then the description style is going to be also imported from the style.ts in the styles folder. And then there is one more container created in here, which is the app body. So that's where everything will fit in. So if I go back into my app.tsx, I then want to render the app body as well. And for now, I'll just put in a P tag named dog form. So now if I save all, we now have the description rendering and the app body rendering. What I'm now going to do is create the header component. Okay, so to create the header, what I'm first off going to do is go into my index.tsx file and just before the app, I'm just going to render a header component like so. So now I need to create the component. So in the components folder, create a new folder named header and in here create a new file named index.tsx and I'm going to use React Functional Snippet, so RFCE, and this will be named header like so. And then what I need to do is import that from the component slash header. So if I now save, we should now have at the top here, a header component being rendered, which we are doing. So all it is, is a case of adding some styles in. So if I create a folder named styles.ts and enter, Again, I'm just going to copy my styles across and paste them in. So I'm going to use the HTML tag of nav for the header as the container. This time we are also going to have a logo container, which is the small dog image that we are getting from this header here on the dog API. So the way to get that image is if you just right click and then copy the image address, which I already have anyway. So going back into the index.tsx in my return block, I'm just going to return the JSX that I have already created like so. So I'm importing the container from the relevant styles file. So in the same directory, the logo container, which is a div and has an image contained within it. So the source is, is the same source that we've copied across. And then I'm just going to name this Imran's dog app like so. And then just finally, we're going to have a title on the right of it. So the container will have a display flex pointing into a row and then it will align items as centrally. So now if I save, we should now have the header component being rendered like we see on the app there. So I don't need to declare any types for this because we are not receiving any props within the header. It's just a simple component rendering some UI out. So now that the UI body is set up on the application, so we have the styles folder, we have the lib folder, and we also have the components folder. What I also want to do is set up a global store. So we are going to be setting up Redux with TypeScript. So there are a few dependencies that I need to install for this. The main dependency that I need is React Redux. So if I install this, so yarn add, and the package name is React dash redux like so. So whilst that is installing, I'm now going to create the reducer folder. So this is where all of my reducers will be stored. So a new folder within the source folder, and this is going to be named reducers. So in this application, I'm only going to have one reducer and it's going to be named app.ts. But first off, I need an index.ts. So the first thing I want to define is my store. So const store is equal to create store. And within here, I'm going to pass in two arguments. The first one is going to be the reducers. So in my case, I will pass in a combined reducers within there. And within the combined reducers is going to only be the app reducer that we're working with reducers which I will declare. And we are also going to declare something called compose enhancers. So I now have the store declared. I also want to export the default of the store. I need to import create store from React Redux. And then I want to now create the first off the reducers and the compose enhancers. So just above this store, I'm going to name const reducers, which is equal to and then we're using combined reducers, which is a Redux hook. Combine reducers like so. 
and in here we are going to have an object where we can pass in as many reducers as we would like so in this case it's going to just be the app which i now need to create the file for so alongside index.ts if i go into the reducers folder and create a new file named app.ts like so and enter so this is where i will create my initial state and my actions that i can dispatch so const app is equal to and this takes two arguments the first argument is the state and then the second argument is the action and this is a callback where i'm going to have my action types so in here i'm going to have a switch statement so it will be switch action dot type so within here i'm going to pass an action type so a default case in a switch statement is always important so default and the default state will always be just return the normal state and we will look at the actions later on but first of all i want to declare the initial state of the application so this will be equal to the initial state or init state and just above here i'm going to declare the init state so when we open the app we will always have a default initial state on there so this is going to be an object and i'm just going to paste in the initial state of the application so the breed will be all the subbreed will be all the number will always be one so these are the drop down selectors that we have the images results will be zero unless we dispatch the action of image results to one two or three and so on and then always error will be false so now we've declared the app we also need to export this app so export default of app and then going back into my index file we also want to import this so import app from dot slash app like so and then i want to import combine reducers from redux which we need to install also so import combine reducers from the package of redux so now if i add that as well so yarn add redux and press enter so now the reducers function is set we also want to compose enhancers i'm just going to bring in my code here and explain it so we want to import compose from redux so essentially what a compose enhancer is so it is used when you want to pass multiple store enhancers to your redux store so in this case we want to have the redux dev tools extension working on our app so now i'm getting the following error which says redux dev tools does not exist on type window and type of global this so we just need to declare a global interface for the window so i'm just going to bring in my code here again so essentially we need to give the redux dev tools a interface because it doesn't come with redux as standard because it is separate to redux so this will declare the window for the redux dev tools here alternatively there is a package called redux dev tools extension and it has a compose with dev tools property that you can also import instead and then finally i just want to bring in the root state which we will need as well later on so now if i save that is the index.ts file complete for typescript if i just hover over this one final thing that i need to install is the react redux type so if i paste this in yarn add as a dev dependency the types for react redux so now that's the index.ts complete and now i want to go into my app.ts so now i want to create my first action type so in the switch statement we have cases so we're going to have a case of the breed so set breed in this case so set underscore breed and in here we are going to return now you can use a few ways so the way i'm going to use is object dot assign or you could use a spread operator as well so object dot assign which creates a new object and we are essentially going to pass in the original state and then manipulate the breed so whatever the payload is we're going to change that so for example when we click the drop down and select a breed of african the payload will be passed across and then the breed will change from all to african so object dot assign passing in an empty object and then the state and then we're going to pass in the breed 
which is going to be manipulated with the action.payload. So essentially what we want to do is create an action for each individual piece of state. So we have one for breed, we need to make one for subbreed, number, image results, error, and then we also want to have a reset which resets everything back to its original state like so. So because we are using TypeScript, I now want to create the types for this reducer. So if I go into the types folder here, I now want to create a new file within here named reducer.ts. And in here, I want to declare the type for each action that I create for the app.ts reducer. So first off, I want to create some enums so that I'm not relying on these strings as we are doing here. If we was to use this in the real application and we was dispatching an action and we made a type error, then the action may not dispatch correctly. So I'm just going to put this into enums for best practice. So in reducer, I'm going to export enum named action type. So this is going to be the type of action that I have. So this will be an object. The first enum that I want is breed, just put in capitals, breed which is equal to the string of set underscore breed, like so. I'm going to do the same for the rest, so I'll just bring them in. So we have some more actions in here. So we have the subbreed enum, the number enum, image results enum, the error and the reset. So now that we have the action type, we can now create interfaces and types for each action. So the first one, if we go through it together, export the interface of the breed action and this will have a type and a payload so the type is going to be the enum action type so action type which we have already defined here and then if i press full stop we now get access to the action types so we are using the features of typescript so the action type for the breed action is going to be action type dot breed put a comma in there and then the payload for this action type is always going to be a string. So now when I dispatch the action for the breed action, so if I wanted to change the breed on the drop down, we will then dispatch an action to the reducer store. The reducer store will only accept the dispatch if it is a string. Otherwise, an error will occur. Essentially, what we are doing is we are dispatching the action and we are checking that it is a string. And I just need to put this as a semicolon instead of a comma. So now if I save, we now have the breed action set. So now if we do the same for the subbreed, it should be identical. So all I'm going to do is copy this underneath. This is going to be named the subbreed. And then instead of the action type being breed this time, it's going to be the subbreed. And the good thing about this is we can just literally delete this full stop. And then we have access to all of the action types that we have declared in the enums like so. So subread, and this is also accepting the string. I'm just going to bring in all the other actions in here that I've declared. And if I save, so the subread action is a string. The number action is a string also, along with the image results action and also the error action. The image results action will be a number actually. So I'll just change this across. And then for the reset, we want to set the reducer state. So we need to create that now. So essentially, the reducer state is going to be the initial state. When we dispatch the reset action, we want to make sure all these properties within this object are set back to its original state. So if I just copy this and then create a new interface, so export interface of reducer state. This is an object that contains all of these properties. So the first three are strings, it's also a string. The error is false, so the error is a boolean. And then this is a number. And now in my error, I'm seeing that I am passing the payload of string, which is incorrect. It should be a boolean. So I'll pass that in as a boolean as well. And now you can see the payload will always be the reducer state. So we will be passing in an object here. So now if I go into app.ts, and instead of case here, I'm now going to type in action type from the types folder slash reducer like so. And then if I press full stop, we now have access to all the properties within the action type. This is going to be the breed like so. So now if we go on to the action, 
it says parameter action as a type of any. So if we go into our reducer here, all of these actions that we have created here, or the interfaces that we have created here, these will be our actions. So essentially we need to export these into a action type. So what I'm going to do is underneath, I'm going to export a type named action. So this will be the type for the actions that we dispatch. And this is going to be equal to all of these actions here. So this could be breed action or the subbreed action like so. So I'm just going to copy the, all of them across and paste that in. So as you can see, it could be any one of these actions above. And now I have exported the type of action. So in my app.ts, this is going to have the type of action which is imported from the types slash reducer. So in the types folder in reducer.ts that we have exported the action here. And to add further to this, I am also going to pass in the type of reducer state here. So reducer state from type reducer so that the arguments within the two parameters of app are always going to be the type of reducer state in here. So now I've got everything set up for the types. So if I save all, I have declared the action type for the action. The initial state is here, which is getting inferred anyway, as the breed as a string and subbreed as a string, number as a string and so on. We can then also add the type here. So this is the reducer state type because we have imported that from the types folder. All we need to do now is pass in all of our actions across. So I'm just going to bring them in now and paste them in underneath. So as you can see, we have the actions for the breed, the subbreed that takes in the payload, the number that takes in the payload, the images results that takes in the payload error. And then when we have the reset, we'll reset the state. So we will just pass in the argument of the initial state like so. So now if I save, we are nearly there with the setup. One last thing to do is we need to go into our index.tsx and within everything here, we just need to wrap a provider around it from React Redux. And then the store is going to be equal to the store that we created in the index.ts file from the reducers. So if I import that in and wrap that in and then everything on inside, so we will wrap from the global style to the theme provider. Now, if I save everything here, we should have now have the second part set up, which is the Redux for state management. So if I was to start the server, so yarn start, and then if I was to inspect my page, we now need to check the state of our application. So if you have Redux dev tools installed, then you can check it on here. I don't have them installed. So all I want to do is put in Redux extension. And then in here we have on the Chrome web store Redux dev tool. So if I add this to Chrome and add the extension, so we've added that in, if I close this off now and refresh my page. So if I inspect and then on the far right, click the arrow and click Redux, we now have an initial state on our application. So if I click on this and then click on state, we now have our app connected to the Redux store. So if I open this, we should have our initial state rendering here. So if I go into my reducers in app.ts, this should be the exact same as that, as you can see here. So the next thing to do now is to install Axios from NPM and then fetch the dog data and get that rendering on the front end. So now what we need to do is install Axios so we can fetch all the dogs data from the API. So first of all, what I want to do is close my terminal and then do yarn add Axios and let that install. In my lib folder, I'm going to create a new file named axios.ts and here I'm going to import axios from axios like so and in here I'm going to create an instance so const instance and this will have a base url within here so it's equal to axios.create and I'm going to create an object that contains the base url and the base url will be 
if I go into the dog's API, as you can see here, we can see all the breeds. So dog.co.api, if I copy that, it is pretty much the same across all of them. So if we was to fetch by the breed, again, it has the same base URL and then by the subbreed as well. Over here, you can see it's got the same base URL. So if I add that in, and then what I want to do is export default of the instance. So now if I save, what I also want to do in my lib folder is create a new file once again named api.ts. So this is where I'm going to do all of my fetching and the endpoints just so it's not done in the components. So this time I want to import Axios from the file I've just created. So the instance and there are four endpoints that I want to create so the first one is fetching all the dog's data i'm going to export all of these functions so i can fetch them on the front end so export const and this one is going to be called fetch dogs data which is an async function and then this will have a callback and in the callback we are going to have a try catch block so try and catch and in the catch block we're going to have an error that basically console.logs the error so that's the error handling complete in the try block i want to first off list all breeds so in the dog api if i click on list all breeds so as you can see this is the endpoint we have the base url already set up so it's just a case of copying the second part so now in here i want to create a response so const response is equal to and because we used async it's now await we are awaiting the response so await axios.get and in here, we're going to pass in the URL that we just copied across. And then all we want to do is return response and then an optional chaining dot data like so. And if I save, that is the first fetch complete. So what we want to do now is do the second fetch. So before I do that, if you hover over the catch block and hover over error, the type of error, so the TypeScript type is unknown. So the reason the type is unknown is because when it comes to runtime, we don't know what the error is going to be. So what we want to do is do an if else check in here. So if ERR is the instance of error, then we want to console log the error, push this up, and then the comment after error is error message. Otherwise, I just want to bring this in and copy this. So in the else block, I want to console log unexpected error, which tells me that this isn't an instance of error. This is something else. So now if I save, we have the try, which is the response fetching the data from this API endpoint, and we should get this response back. And then we also have the catch where we are checking if it's an error, then we will see this console message. Otherwise, we will see the unexpected error console message as well. So the next fetch we are going to do is the subbreed. So if I go into the subbreed here, essentially we need to have a subbreed within here and then we can fetch the relevant subbreed data. So if I put a comment in here saying fetch the subbreed, again, we want to export const the function name, so fetch dogs subbreed which is again equal to an async function. And then I'm just going to copy the try catch block again and save. But this time what we essentially want to do is change the endpoint. So it is slash breed slash hound slash list. So slash breed slash hound slash list. But then this hound has to be dynamic. So I now need to pass in the breed in here. So it will take in the breed and this will be a string that we pass in so we are declaring the type and then instead of hound we want to use template literals and pass in the breed argument that we are passing in replace this with a template literal like so so we get the response and we pass down the response dot data and once again we are doing the same catch block in here this could be declared in a function to make it more streamlined and look better. But in this case, I'm just going to keep it as it is. What we also want to do is fetch the breed images. So again, export const. So essentially we are progressing with this. So we're fetching the breed data. Then we're fetching the subbreed data if the dog has a subbreed. And then we are passing the number of images across. So export const fetch breed images, or this could be fetch dog images, whatever you prefer, is equal to async once again. 
and we will have some parameters being passed across in again but i'm going to copy the try catch block in once again and then the end point this time will be i'll just bring it in from what i made earlier so slash breed and then slash the relevant breed that's passed in forward slash images slash random and then the number of images that we want so the arguments for this are a breed and a number so in here a breed and a number and they are both going to be strings as well and then just finally i'm going to do the same for the subbreed images so i'm just going to bring this in copy this across and paste in so the subbreed images take in a breed a subbreed and the number so this time is slash breed slash the actual breed that we pass in and the subbreed and then at the end we pass in the number to fetch the relevant data so now if i save all we now have the api.ts file complete and the axio setup complete so now what all we need to do is on our front end create the dog form and then we also would need to create the results form. So on my index.ts, if I go in there and then into the app where I am rendering the dog form, I also want to render the result. So these are two components that we need to create. Okay, so now that we have created the API endpoints that we are going to fetch the data from, what we want to do is when we load into the app, we essentially want the breed list loaded. So then we have the drop down for that. So in my app component, I'm going to create a function at the top here, and this is going to be named fetch data, which again is going to be equal to async, and then it's going to have a callback. And in here, we want to get all the dogs data. So if I go into API TS, and this is called fetch dogs data. So if I copy that, and then we want to await fetch dogs data. So control space so i'm importing this from lib api and then we're going to chain a dot then which has a callback in here as well so in the then we are going to have the data and then we want to console log the data with optional chaining dot message so now if i save we have that fetch data function set i also want to add a catch block in there as well so if i just add that in and save so now we just need to call the fetch data function when we load the page on the initial page render so the way to do that is with a use effect hook so that when the component mounts we want to fetch the data so if i have a use effect snippet and then i just need to import the use effect from react and when the component mounts we want to fetch the data and I'll just remove this for now and then take the dependency out. So we just want an empty dependency in here saying that when it loads initially, we want to fetch the data. So now if I save and then if I inspect in my console, we now have an object being returned, which has all of the dog's data in here. So now we, what we need to do is add some state in the app component so i'm going to create a piece of state so const and i'm going to use use state for this instead of redux so this will be named read list and then set breed list and i'm initially going to set it to use state from react as null and if i import this as well at the top from react and now we have the breed list set so now what i want to do is instead of console logging the data dot message I want to set the breed list to the data dot message as well. I also want to create a subbreed list because as you can see here, we have subbreeds as arrays. So if I just copy this across and paste this underneath, this will be named subbreed list and set subbreed list. And this is going to be an empty array initially. I also want to do the same for the images. So this will be an empty array also. So images and set images so this array will contain images that we fetch from the api so it will have a key so the key will be the length of images that we pass across and then just finally we want a is loading state so const is loading and set is loading which is going to be a boolean so the is loading will be false so now if i hover over for example the use state on is loading as you can see here, it's already inferred the type as boolean because we have already passed in false. So you don't really need to declare a type, but you can do so boolean like so. 
that you can do that as well or you could just let TypeScript infer the type. So now that I've set the breed list, I also want to set is loading to fault. So set is loading to fault like so because we now have the data and I now need to create the loader. So I now want to add a guard clause in here. So if is loading is true, then what I want to do is return a loader component. So we will create this now. So if I go into my components folder, create a new folder in here named loader, and then I'm just going to create a file of index.tsx and also styles.ts. And I'm just going to bring in my styles. So we have a loading or loader container, which has a keyframe spin on there. And then we have some styles that we've declared here. So in my index file, I'm just going to bring in the loader functional component in here. Essentially, we want to import the loader container from dot slash styles. And now if I save, we have a container with the spinner. And then what we need to do is import this into our app. So control spacebar and then bring in the loader from the components. And what I also want to do is if we don't have a breed list, so if no breed list is set, then all we want to do is return a P tag with the text no dogs found. So now if I save and then refresh the page, we should now be receiving the breed list as the fallback text of no dogs found is not on the page. So all we need to do now is map through this and create a dog form component and a results component. So first off in our components, we will create a new folder named dog form. And in here, a new file named index.tsx. And this time we will be receiving props. So we will do tsrfce like so. And this component will be the dog form. Now, if I save, and I also want to import this in our app. So instead of dog form now, as a p tag, we will import the dog form from the components folder. I also want to pass down props into our dog form. So I'll just bring them across and explain. So we will pass down the breed list, which is the use state of breed list. So essentially when we fetch the dog's data, we want to set the breed list to the breed list and pass it down. The same with the sub breed list, if there is any, we will set the images to the action of set images and the same for the set is loading to the set is loading. So now if I go into my dog form, I should be getting an error saying props is an empty object, which it is. So I now need to pass down the props that I've passed across. So we are getting the breed list, the sub breed list, set images and set is loading. I'm just going to delete the duplicate object curly bracket. And here I want to create an interface for the props being received. And these will be the following. And I'm first off going to name all of them as any. So now if I save, the errors should go away. If I now go back into my app, we are getting an error in here, which means we need to have an enclosing forward slash at the end. So that corrects that issue. Now, if I go back into my dog form, I want to now map out what is going to be in my dog form. So if I create parentheses and then in here, add some comments. So first off, I'm going to have a breed dropdown. I'm also going to have a sub breed dropdown a numbers drop down. So I'm going to go up to 50. So a number drop down of 50 on there. And then I'm also going to have a button component that has search and reset on there. So the first thing to consider here is I have three drop downs. So what the best approach would be is to create a reusable drop down component. But first off, I'm going to create a dog form container. So this will be named dog form container. So, and then again, we need to create the corresponding styles file for this. So styles.ts and in here, I'm going to import my styles and paste them in and rename this dog form container like so. And if I go back in here, I'm just going to import this from my styles. And then if I move these up into my form and I render a P tag saying dog form like so. So now if I save all 
and we need to comment this all out and save again. We now have a dog form being rendered in here with the relevant styles. So within my dog form, I want to create a new folder and this is going to be named the drop down folder. So this is where I'm going to create the reusable drop down component. And as we do in all our folders, create a new file named index.tse and tsrfce because we will be receiving props. This will be named drop down as the component. I am then going to create an interface for this drop down, which is named props. And I'm going to bring over the three props that are going to be passed down. So that is the title, children, and show error. So this drop down will have a container and we need to create the corresponding styles file for this. So I'll just copy that, styles.ts and paste in the styles here. So I'll go through this. So what will happen is we will have an interface for the drop down. So essentially we have a drop down container that takes in certain props. In this case, we will be having a prop of show error. So if show error is true, which is a Boolean, then we want to have a red border around and a red outline around the select drop down that says this is an error essentially. We will go into this further. So what we need to do is render out the component. So within the container, I will first off want to have an H5 in here, and that will be the title that we pass down as the prop. Then we want to render the drop down container. So if you import that from the styles, I also need to import the container from the styles. And then if show error is passed down, then we need to render show error and render the error text. So please choose the breed above. So now if I save, we have a few errors that we need to ad address. So in my drop down container, I want to re-render React children. So if I wrap the drop down around, we can then pass in the children in here. And also the drop down container will receive the show error prop. So if I just copy that across into here, so it gives the red outline and the red border around if show error is true and show error will be optional. So we will add this into the interface. So show error will be received as an optional. So what we do is you put a question mark here and what it will be essentially is a Boolean value. The title we receive will be a string value because we are rendering a H5. And then the children will be, if we hover over children in here, at the minute it's got a parameter of any, but essentially what children is, is a React node. So react.react node like so. So now if I save, that is all rendered correctly. What we now need to do is go back into our dog form and we have first off a breed dropdown so in here, I want to bring in the drop down component that we have just made. So it's drop down and we need to pass in a few props in here. So if I hover over this, it says props are missing. So we've got title children missing from this and then show error can be an optional. So title for the first drop down is going to be select a breed. I'm going to set show error to true for now is equal to true but we will have this hooked up to the error that we set up on the reducer and now what we want to do is render the children so if i create a closing drop down and then in here i'm just going to type in i am rendered as a child so now if i save as you can see here we have a title which we have passed in so select a breed we have the show error as true which then says please choose a breed above if that's true and we also have the child or the children in here as i am rendered as a child so now if i set this to false and save as you can see the error is gone so all we need to do now in the children is render a select drop down in here okay so what we want to do for the children is create a select drop down in here and we will do this for the three drop downs that we have stated. So all we do is select like so. We don't need a name and ID. What I'm going to do instead is have a on change method in here. 
a takes in the event as a parameter, so e like so, and then we want to pass and return the e dot target dot value in like so. And what we can do is console log this first of all. So console dot log e dot target dot value. And also with this select drop down, we want to give it a value which is equal to the breed list state that we are passing down as a prop. And I also want to console log this breed list as a prop that we are receiving from the app component. So now if I save, we have a select drop down here, as you can see. And if we click on it, nothing is happening because we are console logging and we're not doing anything with the value. So if we check the breeds list, we now are getting this passed down from the app component. So now we need to render all of the keys within this list. So this is an object. So in here, I'm going to create a function called render the breed. The const render breed takes in an event like so and has a callback. And then in this render breed, I'm just going to console log e in here and also a comment saying function is working like so. And then if I copy the render breed and instead of the console log here, I'm going to run render breed as e target dot value. And then I'm just going to put test as text in here. So now if I save, I now have an error on here, which says parameter E implicitly has any type. So we need to add a type for the event. So now the E.target.value is being passed in as a string. So all we need to do in here is change this to a string. And then I want to change the E to a value. So we are passing in a value in here and save this as value also. So now if I save, all the errors have gone. So where it now says test, I want to pass in an option. And the first option that I want to pass in is the all option. So option value is going to be all, and then that will equal select breeds. So now I have the select breeds, but that's the only option. I also want to map through the breeds list that we are getting from the props from the app.tsx. So if I create a new option in here, and this option is only going to be rendered when breeds list is true and has a length and a value. So I'm going to, in my JSX, create parentheses. So breeds list. So if breeds list is there, we want to do and. So what we want to do is map through the breed list, but we only want to get the keys here, which are the main breeds. So we do object.keys and we pass in the breed list. And if is there and is true then we want to map so dot map and then we get the for each breed in here so we want to get the breed and we also want to get the index as the second argument i want to implicitly return let me just scroll up a bit and press enter so first off we want to get the keys for all the breed lists so all of the keys here we want to see if they are there then we want to map for each breed, we want to get the breed and the index of that breed. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. We want to then render an option. So what we created here, so move this up into the return block. The value is going to be equal to the breed. We are also going to return the breed in here as well as the text. And we also, because we are mapping, we are wanting to give this a key. So the key in this case will be the index. So now if I save and check my select drop down, as you can see now, we have a list of all of the breeds in here. So now what we want to do is do something with this when we do an on change click. So if I change to Bulldog, you can see here Bulldog function is working. So that is this render breed function. So in this render breed function, if I comment this out, and if we go into the Redux dev tools, you can now see the initial state as all for now. What we want to do is when we change, we want to select this, and then we want to dispatch an action to the Redux store so that the value that has been changed updates within the global store state. So when we select, for example, Akita, 
this will then update from all to Akita. So to do this, what we need to do is we have already created the reducer actions in our reducer file. So all we need to do is get access to the dispatch hook from Redux. So const dispatch is equal to use dispatch from React Redux like so. So now we have access to the dispatch. All we need to do is dispatch an action. So dispatch and in the dispatch, we pass in the type and the payload. So type is going to be the action type that we have already created. So we're going to import this from the types slash reducer. So all I need to do now is press the full stop. And then the breed is what we are going to amend or change in this case. And then the payload is going to be what we receive as the value here. So payload will be the value like so. So now if I save and all being well, this should now dispatch in the reducer here. So if I selected Akita, we can now see the dispatch has worked and the set breed action has been dispatched to the store. So if I was to click on that, you can see here the breed has now changed to Akita. If I go into this action tab here, you can see the action that we have dispatched from the click. So in here, we dispatch the type of breed, which is the equivalent to set breed. So we dispatched action type dot breed. And then the payload was the value we passed in, which is the Akita value. So now what we need to do is it is Akita on the store, but it still is select breeds in here. So essentially what we need to do is display the value of the store onto the front end UI. So on our select, as you can see here, the value is the breeds list, but what we essentially want to do is get the value from the store. So there's a hook that we need to use called use selector. So first off, we want to get access to the store. So const dog store is equal to use selector this time from React Redux. So in here, we get access to the state. So as you can see here, state, and then in here, we want to get the state of the app. So state passing in the state dot app like so. Now, if I save, we now have access to the dog store. If I console log the dog store, and we also need to amend this error. So object is of type unknown. So if I hover over this, it's of type unknown. So we need to give the state a type and I am going to give it a type of root state, which we defined in our reducers file. So if I go there and if I was to go into the root state, let's see what it returns. So it returns type of store.getState. So now if I close this off, we now have access to the dog store. So what I want to do is go in my console. And then if I save all, we can now see our dog store is being logged out in the console now. So now we need to get access to the breed in here. So if I just separate this out, so I want to declare a variable. So const breed state is going to be equal to dog store. And then if I press full stop, we now have access to the dog store and we want to render out the breed for this one. So that is dog store dot breed. And I also want to optional change this. So if we have the dog store, then return the breed. So now if I copy the breed state and instead of the breed list value now, the value is going to be the same as the breed state. So if I replace this and paste and now save, we now have the Akita being rendered, which is similar to the breed state. If I was to change this to Dane, now we can see the Dane is being set in the reducer and in the store, another action was dispatched. So if I click on this action, we can see here that the payload was the value of Dane. So in the state, the breed has now updated to the Dane string. So now that we have the breeds rendering on the page and we are successfully updating this on the reducer as well, as you can see, we now can then fetch the subread list. So what I need to do is go into the app.tsx again. And in here, because we have fetched the dog's data, 
we can now fetch the subbreed list as well. So after this block here, I'm going to do an if check. So if the breed state, so the up breed state is not equal to all. So initially it is all, but it will change when we change that. And then we have access to the amended breed state. And I'm just going to use the use selector hook again to get access to the dog store and also the breed state. So if I import the use selector hook, and the root state from my reducer file. So now I have access to the breed state and if it is not equal to all in this block, I now want to make a, a fetch request to the subbreed list this time. And I'm going to do a wait. And if I just go into my API file, so it is in lib api.ts and the function is called fetch dog subbreed. And we need to pass in a breed. So we have that in the reduce and now so back into my app.tsx so away fetch dog subbreed and we pass in the breed state as the argument and we also need to import this in from the api then essentially we just need to copy this here so underneath paste the dot then so now we want to set instead of set breed list we want to set subbreed list to the data dot message and set is loading to false and then now what we can do is pass in the subbreed list into the dog form component so we have access to that here and we will be receiving that also if i now save all I also want to memoize the data. So essentially we are getting a use effect in here. So instead of fetching the data every single time, I want to add in a use callback hook in here, which memoizes the data. So only essentially what it does is it catches the data unless we pass in a certain dependency that we need to look out for. If that dependency is changed, then we want to refetch the data again. So use callback from React, and this is going to be passed as a wrapper across. And at the end, we want to put a dependency in here. And if I import this from React, and now it will tell me either include it or remove the dependency array. So we want to include the breed state. So what we want to do is we only want to fetch the data when the breed state changes. So now in here, I want to pass in fetch data as a dependency. So if fetch data now changes, then we need to rerun the reuse effect again and fetch the data. And within the fetch data function, we are passing in a use callback in here to look out for the breed state. If that changes, then we want to fetch the data once again. What I am also going to do is pass in the breed state in the use effect also. So now what has happened there is it has removed the TypeScript error from here also. So now this block of code is going to change when we change the breed state. So essentially when we change this, then we will refetch the data once again. So if I save all into my dog form component, I now will be receiving the prop for the subbreed list. So if I copy this and paste this in the console log, I also want to remove this console log and this one also. And now if I save and I go into my console and refresh the page, if I was to select a breed that has a subbreed in it, then we will make a network request to the fetch subbreed API. So if I was to select Australian, which has subbreeds, as you can see, it has a shepherd as a subbreed in here. So we now just need to render the UI for this drop down. So if I just delete this comment here, and essentially I want to almost copy this drop down and paste this underneath. And instead of select a breed, we want to select a subbreed this time. And now what we want to do is on change, we now need to create a new function named render subbreed this time, passing in the target value. And then the value will be the subbreed state. So if I change this to subbreed state, and we need to now access this in our Redux store as we did with the breed state. So if I go back up and now I need to declare this. So const subbreed state is equal to the dog store optional chaining and then dot. And then as you can see the subbreed here, and we also need to create the dispatch for this now. So const render subbreed, and this will take in a value again of a string. So it's the same function. And what we are going to do is essentially dispatch the subbreed of the value and the action type in this case will be action type dot subbreed like so. 
what I also want to do is when we change the main breed, then we want to set the payload for the subbreed back to all. So if I copy this and paste this in the render breed function, and the payload this time will equal the string of all like that. Now render subbreed is going to dispatch a value that we pass in. So in here, we are passing the e.target.value, and then the option in this case will be select subbreed, and this will be singular. And now if I just comment out the breed list mapping for now, and if I now save all, we should now see the subbreed being rendered out on the page. So if I select this, we can now see the subbreed. So all we need to do now is if we are getting a subbreed, we need to map through it. So if I go up to subbreed list like so, and then uncomment this out. And because this time the subbreed is an array and not an object, we don't need to do objects.keys anymore. So we can just paste in the subbreed list. And I also want to check for a length. If it has a length, then we want to map through the subbreed list, passing through the breed and the index. So in this case, the breed will have a type of string and then the index will have a type of number. And then the option value for this one is breed, or we can name this subbreed, which I will do. Control D subbreed, like so. And then again, within the option is going to be the subbreed. And then the key is the index, which is of type number. Now, if I save, we should now have the shepherd being rendered. And I want to go into my Redux store once again. And we have the breed set, and the action is Australian. So now what we want to do is when we select shepherd, we want a new action to be dispatched named set subbreed. So if I select that, the subbreed is now selected as shepherd. If we go into the state of the app, we now have Australian and shepherd there. So now we have the first two drop downs of the breeds being rendered. There's one more drop down to look at, which is the numbers one. So what I'm going to do is after this drop down here, I'm going to create a new drop down. So if I just copy this drop down again and paste this underneath, the title this time that we are passing is going to be number of images, like so. Again, show error is going to be false. And then the children in this case, we want to now create a render number function, number function like so. And we need to create that at the top. So if we scroll to the top and then it's going to be const render number, which again takes in the value. So I'm going to pass all of this across, paste that in. It takes in a value, but this time we're going to dispatch the action of number instead. And now we have that all there. We have a function for render breed, render subbreed and render number. If I go back down to my number drop down, so number of images, I'll give this as a capital. So the value this time will be the number state. So number state, which we need to get from the Redux store. So if I go back to the top and underneath const number state is equal to dog store optional chaining dot number and then pass that in as the value which we have done. So now within the option, what we now need to do is we need to create a counter list of going from one to 50. And there are many ways you could do this. The way I am going to do this is with the array.from method. So if we create an array.from here and in this array.from, we are going to pass in two arguments. First is going to be a length argument of 50. That's what we want. And then the second argument, we are going to put in a underscore because we don't need the first parameter and then we need the index and then this will have a callback and we want to implicitly return an option once again and the value for this option will be the index plus one because it starts off from zero with javascript and then also with this option we want the key which is equal to the index once again and then if i just copy this and render this out within the option so the index plus one is the option value so now we have a list of one going through to 50 and whatever we select in there it dispatches the action and runs the function render number so then again we will dispatch the set number action this time and update the store accordingly so if i now save we now have the number of images being rendered out on the page 
And then if I was to select seven, we now have the set number as the action payload as seven. And then the state of the app is now spreading the initial state. So the Australian and Shepherd, and then we are also adding seven to it as well. And then that is also being rendered out in the UI also. So now that we have the three drop downs rendering on the dog form component, what I want to do is this file has gotten quite large and I want to refactor it. So an easy way to refactor this is the three functions that I have here. I'm just going to export them into a helpers file or a helpers folder. So within my components or within the source, actually, I'm going to create a new folder named helpers. And in here, I'm just going to create a new file named index.ts. And if I go into my dog form component and cut this all out, and paste this in here. First off, I want to export these three functions. So export the render breed, the subbreed, and the render number so we can access them. We also want to get the dispatch as a second parameter to the functions. So if I copy this and paste it in after the value again, and one more time, and now we need to pass the dispatch in from the component. So if I control space now, we can now get the render breed from the helpers. So the first argument is the e.target.value, and then the second will be the dispatch like so. So we now need to do the same three times, paste that in. And we also need to import this from helpers. And then the last one, again, render number from helpers and then paste in the dispatch like so. And now we don't need action type here. We would need to import that into the helper. So if I go back into here and import action type from my reducer file, and then the dispatch needs a type also. So if we re import the dispatch type from Redux and then in the dispatch type, we just want to pass in the any. And now if I save all, we now need to repeat this two more times in this helper file. And now, as you can see, if I save again, we have now cleaned up the dog form component. I also want to add prop types onto the interface. So the subbreed list is an array of strings. So I'll just put in string and then add an array there. And then for the breed list, I now want to create a type for this. So in my types folder, I want to create a new file named breed.ts. And I'm just going to bring over what I have already. It is a little messy. Control A, B. So essentially each key, so I've copied all of them and each key has a type of the subbreeds type, which is a array of strings. So now if I export the breeds type and this is going to be imported into the breed list here. So if I paste this in, and import it from my breeds type like so. And now if I save, it is now rendering and we have the relevant types for the breed list and the sub breed list as well. I also want to delete the console log here. And now if I save all, the final thing what we want to render is the button component. So we need to create that as well. So the button component is potentially the most crucial element on this app. So essentially we're going to get the three states here in the store, and then we are going to make an API request dependent on whatever is filled in. We are going to fetch the relevant API URL. And then what we are going to do is display the results. So we'll look at that later on onto the UI. So first off, if I create the button component, so button like so, and then I now need to go into my component folder and create a new folder in here called button and then create an index.tsx file in here. And this will receive two props. So tsrfce, and this is named the button. And the props that we receive for the button are going to be the set images and set is loading. So if I pass these in as well, so back in my dog form in here, paste in set images and set images is going to be what we receive from the app.tsx at the top level. So I'm just going to pass this down as props. So set images is equal to set images and then set is loading is equal to set is loading. So all I now need to do is import the button and now if I save all and go back into my button component and declare an interface for this and now I'm going to declare the set images and set is loading as any for now 
until we know what it is that is being passed down so, and do the same there and save so as you can see the button component is being rendered in my return block i now want to just bring over what i have if i bring this over and paste it in so we have a fetch button first of all that renders a handle images fetch function so we need to create that when we click the search dogs and we have a reset button on here that dispatches the action of action type dot reset as well so if i just import the action type first of all and then i also need the dispatch so again we need the use dispatch hook from react redux so const dispatch is equal to use dispatch so now I now need to create this as a function as well. So const handle image fetch, and I'm just going to give it an empty function for now, and then we'll handle that later. And I also now need to bring in the styles. So if I create a new file in here, named styles.ts, like so, and then I'll just copy the styles and bring them across. But you can look at the styles in your own time. So now I just need to import them in as well. And then the same with the reset button as well. So now if I I save all we should have the two buttons being rendered on the page which we are doing as you can see here so now all it is is a case of if I was to press the reset function this would dispatch the reset action which it does as you can see reset breathe state resets everything back to its normal state so now all we need to do is do the images fetch so if i go into here there are a few checks that i need to do so we need to get access to the global state again so if breathe state is equal to the string of all which at the moment it is what we need to do then is we want to dispatch the action of set error to true because there's nothing has been selected so what i want to do is again get access to the dog door and then get the use selector so i've already got this and i'm going to bring it in here so if breathe state is equal to all we want to then dispatch the error action as true because at the minute we don't have a breathe state therefore we cannot fetch anything so that's the first argument there set so we now we need to carry on with the function so the handle images fetch though is an async function so if i add async in there because we, what we need to do is fetch data once we have something other than all in there so now i'm just going to copy this paste that in here if breathe state is not equal to all and the sub breathe state is equal to all meaning that we have selected a breed but the sub breed we have not selected what we want to do in this case is we want to make a fetch so await and then fetch the breed images so we are using the lib folder and the api helper file in there so fetch the breed images and the breed images takes in two arguments as you can see here typescript is serving me documentation that i have already created so we take in a breed which is a string value and a number so initially the number is always one but we can change that in the state in here so first argument i'm going to pass is the breed state and paste that in and then the second one is going to be the number state then we want to chain the dot then and get access to the data within and we want to return and before we return we want to console log the data that we receive so console log data that we receive like so so what i want to do to hit this is i now also need to import use selector from react redux and the root state to get rid of these errors and now if i save so now if i go into my console and i want to go into my handle images fetch so i want to select a breed so if i select select Briod for example and then select a number of three and if I click search dog we now have something being returned in here so we have a status of success so that's what we want to check out for first of all so if the data dot status is equal to success which means we have something returned and data dot message which is an array so we want to check the length of the array so dot length then what we want to do in here is we want to set the images which is declared at the app js level which is an array an empty array at the time so then when we set the images we can map through the images to display the result so we want to set the images to data dot message like so we also want to set is loading is false and we want to dispatch the action type of image results to the payload of the length of images here so as you can see here we have 
three. So now if I save and now if I press prior once again, we are getting the data once again on here. And I want to check my Redux store. And if I scroll to the bottom, we are getting the images results as a payload being passed down as three also. We also need to add a catch block in here. So after the then we want to paste in the catch block of error and remove the console log and save. So the last state to check for now is if the breed state is not equal to all and the subbreed state is not equal to all also we want to do a different fetch so the fetch this time will be await fetch subbreed images this time so what we need to pass now is a breed a subbreed and a number so if i copy this so the first argument is the breed state the second argument should be the subbreed state and then the third argument is the number state so now i just want to copy the then and catch block because it will be the same and paste that in here so now we have almost completed the dog form what i want to do is make some changes first of all the props that we are receiving in the button and now i want to set them as their relevant prop types so if i find the set images where we are setting it so if we go into the app.tsx and for the setter function if we hover over this we can see here the set images has a type so i'm just going to copy this if i just move this out and and hover over these set images and copy this type here so if i go into the dog form component set images will have the same type now as react.dispatch set state action of never and then we are passing this down once more into the button component and i also want to paste that in here so we just need to do the same for the set is loading type so if i go back into app.tsx once again and if i hover over we can see it again here it is a boolean value this time so i'm just going to put it into the dog form component and set is loading is now going to be react dispatch of the set state action like so i just now need to go again into the button component and change the any type to this so now if i save and i also want to go into the dog form component and in here we declared the error type as false on show error so what we now need to do is get the error state so const error state from the dog store is equal to dog store dot error like so and instead of show error now of being false we want to change that to the error state so if i go down change this one again and then change this one again so now what i also want to do is if i select the breed and then click search like so i want the error to show up so if i save all and as you can see the error state in the store is true so now what we need to do is if i was to reset the search you can see here it is now fault because we've reset the breed state if i was to click search dogs again as you can see here all three drop downs are being highlighted so we need to change that so i don't want to pass in the show error prop on the number of images one because it's always got a default i also don't want to pass it into the subbreed because sometimes there might not be a subbreed and i want to conditionally render this subbreed now so that if there is a subbreed then we want to show the drop down so all i'm going to do here is get the subbreed's length if it does have a length then we want to show this as a drop down otherwise we want to render null so underneath here i want to render null so now within this block we are rendering the drop down here and now if i save all we can now see the subbreed is hidden unless we select a breed that has a subbreed inside so for example if i selected australian the subbreed then pops up and finally what i also want to do is so if we change the main breed i want to then dispatch the set error action as false so what i need to do now is go into my helpers in here we just need to add dispatch action as false for the action type dot and then we see the error here so now if i save all and now if i was to change the drop down to chow for example the set error has been set to false it doesn't have a subbreed so the subbreed drop down is not showing 
and then I want to render 23 for example and if I click search it sets the image results and then if I was to check the network tab and as you can see here we are making an API request with a response here and we are getting all the images returned we should get 23 images of chow being returned here so now if i just go through the dog form itself i want to just check that my prop types are being rendered correctly so the interface for the props on this dog form component are correct and then if i go down into my button component the props we have types for them and then just finally, if I go into my drop down as well, we have the relevant types here. As you can see, show error is optional. So we are only passing it through onto the select a breed input. So now all we need to do is create a results component that will render out the dog images. So now we've created the dog form. What we want to do is create the results component. So if I was to select a breed, for example, Australian, and then I would select an Australian Shepherd with three images on there. So if I was to search that, we will make a fetch request and set the images to an array which is declared above in the app component level so the state is images so if i was to console log images here so console log images and save and if i was to inspect and see what is returned we now get a list of three image urls here so all we need to do now is render the result component for this so as you can see here we have a p tag named results so what i essentially want to do is create a component so if I create the results component like so and in here I want to pass down the images that we are getting as a prop so images is equal to images and again create a new folder within the components called results and within result create a new file named index.tsx so we are going to receive props for this which is the array of images that we are passing down so results and the prop are going to be the images i'm going to create this as an interface and for now i'm just going to give this images type of any now all i need to do is import this from the results component and i also want to conditionally render this when we have the image results date when we click on the search button and we have fetched the image data so if I go back into the button component, so if we click on handle images fetch, we dispatch image results. And if that has a length greater than zero, then we want to render the results component. So if I go back into my app and import this, which we have already done, we have an error on here. So we need to add the enclosing bracket in here and that fixes the issue. So we want to conditionally render the results component. So I first of all need to get access to the image result state on the Redux store. So const image result state is equal to dog store dot image result. And then if this image result is greater than zero, so image result is greater than zero if that is the case then we want to render the result component so if i just cut this and paste it here and now save we are conditionally rendering results component so if i was to reset the search this would not be visible so if i click reset search as you can see the results component is not rendering now so going into my results component first off i want to have a container and then I will add styles for this. So a new file, styles.ts. And if I paste in them styles, and then if I import the styles across and save, within my container, I want to create a h1 first off, and this will be the gallery. And then I want to create two components in here. First one will be the dog info, so dog info component. And then we also want to create the images component also. So if I now save, I want to first off see if the UI is rendering correct. So two images, I'm going to make a fetch request for the Australian Shepherd. So if I click search, we are now rendering the results component with the gallery being rendered as well. So first off, I want to create this dog info component, which gives the information for the dog that we have selected. So I'm going to create this in the result folder and this will be named dog info and in here we're going to create a new file index.tsx and this won't receive any props or rfce and 
This is because we will get our dog information from the Redux store. So dog info, and then all I need to do is import this and save. So we are now rendering the dog info. I want to get access to the dog store information that we need and require for this. So that will be this breed name, the subbreed date, and the number of results. So if I paste in the dog store and the states that we are selecting and import the relevant items that we need. So now in my return block, I'm going to have a container that has the styles that I'm going to create. So again, new file styles.ps. And then I'm just going to bring in my styles for this component, paste in. Now I have the container that is coming from dot slash styles. Now, if I save, as you can see, the dog info styles are being passed across. We now need to have two children within here. First one is going to be a title. So I'm going to render a function for this. So render title like so. And I'm going to create this function in a moment. The const render title is equal to a function and that is empty for now. And then underneath, I'm going to create a P tag. And this is going to get the image results state. So the length of the results that we are getting, and we're going to get this in parentheses. So this will get the length and then this will just say results like so. So if I now save, the container is saying that we expect a single child. So all I want to do is create a React fragment. So you can do it this way, which is a shorthand way. And then I want to move the two children within the react fragment so now save and you can see here we have selected two so therefore we have two results in here and this needs to be there and now if i save all we need to do now is create the render title function which essentially would show the breed if there is a breed and the subbreed if there is a subbreed so all i'm going to do is just bring in this function in here and explain it so essentially what we are doing is if there is a breed state and a subbreed state then we are wanting to render the breed state hyphen subbreed state so in this case it will be australian dash shepherd and then we have a function that we need to declare named capitalize breed which essentially takes the first character of the string and capitalizes it if there is no subbreed state so if there is a breed state but not a subbreed state then what we want to do is just render the subbreed state so in this case it would be just the australian so all i want to do is bring in the capitalize breed function as well and just import that before and now if i save we can now see here we have australian shepherd being rendered if that was select subbreed then it would just be the australian being rendered like so so all that is left to create is the image component so the images component is quite simple essentially what we want to do is we want to render the component and pass the images down to the component and then just map all the images out from there so if i create the images component like so and then i'm going to pass the images which is equal to images in here as props and then i'm going to in my results folder create a new folder called images and if i copy the result component in here and then in the images folder create a new file called index.tsx paste in the type and the return block we just need to remove this we are getting the container from the style so i need to create that file so styles.ts and again i'm just going to bring in the styles for my image component to paste them in we've got a hover on there as well which scales across and it increases the size of the image if i go back in here and remove the children and then within the container i want to map through the images so images and if there are images then we want to map so for each image that we get we want to implicitly return an image tag which source is going to be the image and then the alt text is going to be the dog image and then i also want to give the image a key so the key in this case will be the index again so we now need to add that as a parameter on our map return so index and then i also need to close this image tag off so now if i save image is of type any so we now need to change that so it's basically an array of strings so i'm just going to amend this in here also and then we also need to import the images component from the images folder so import images from and the dot slash images folder and close that off 
And one more change I need to make is this is not the result component, but it is the images component. Now, if I save all, it's now saying we need to have the container from styles. What I also want to do is wrap this in the image container from the styles as well. So a div surrounding the image tag and then the image container will have a key of index. So if I paste that in and now if I save, and now you can see we are rendering two images on here and we are getting an error. So if I just hover over this, so it just says here redundant alt attribute screen readers already announced this. So I just basically just put dog instead like so. And one final performance touch is going to be loading is equal to lazy. So now if I save, we now have the gallery rendering correctly. We have the relevant Australian dog. If I was to reset the search, we have no image results being rendered. If I was to select a breed, for example, the Labradoodle, it does not have a subbreed. So I'm going to select 10 and then I'm going to search for that dog. And what has happened is it has only returned two results. So that's how many Labradoodles there must be. So if I go on to press one, for example, and search, it would only return one. And if I was to press three, it would still return two because there are only two in that array being returned. If I was to check a Mastiff, and this has a subbreed of bull. So I'm going to again check 11 this time to see if there are 11 results. And as you can see, there are 11 results because there are 11 strings being written within the array. And then once again, if I was to reduce the screen size, this would then go from a display flex to a flex direction of column. So it's also responsive as well. So all I want to do now is reset the search and now we have the app complete using react js and typescript we are using redux to manage the state axios to fetch the data style components and the last thing to do is we need to add our unit tests so in this section i'm going to add a few unit tests to the app because we are using redux for state management we want to mock the redux store so the package we want to introduce is Redux mock store. So what I'm going to do first off is install that. So yarn add Redux dash mock dash store like so. And that's installing. And we also want to have the types for Redux mock store as well, because we are using TypeScript. So I'm going to add this as a dev dependency as well. So yarn add dash capital D and then paste in the types for the Redux mock store. So you can use both your own reducer as the store, or you can mock a store with Redux mock store. So I will be doing both. So if I go into my app.test here, and I want to render the app, and I want to check if the link element is in the document, this is now not the case. So what I want to check for is the text of created by in the document. So if I just copy this, and I'm just going to name this created by and then the text is going to be created by and now if I save and run yarn test we can now see here that the test has failed if I scroll up it says here could not find react redux context value please ensure the component is wrapped in a provider so because it's only the app if we go into the app on here this will be wrapped and it's using state along with the redux store so if i go into here essentially what i want to do is almost mimic this here so if i copy this across and go into my app.test.tsx and i want to render the app surrounding with the redux store i don't need the header so i will remove that and I want to control space and import the theme provider and the global style. And then I also want to have the provider wrap from React Redux. If I was to bring this down a little bit and now save, we now need to pass in a store to our provider. And we also need to import the theme, which I will do from our lib folder. So now for this, I'm going to create a dog store using Redux mock store. So dog store 
is the render. So what I need to do is create an initial state. So const init state, and I'm just going to copy what I have across. So essentially the initial state of the store is going to be the same as our actual Redux store. As you can see here, the breed is all, the subbreed is all, the number is one, and the image result is zero, along with the errors as false. So now I want to mock a store. So const mock store is equal to, and I'm going to get the configure store method from Redux mock store. So configure store, like so, and I'm going to import this. So if I bring this in from Redux mock store at the top, so now we have the configure store. And what I now need to do is create the dog store. So const dog store is equal to the mock store. And in the mock store, I'm now going to pass the initial state in here. So now the dog store is now being passed into our provider. So now if I save, the text is now failing. But as you can see, the component is now rendering, but it's saying no dogs are found because we haven't fetched any data. So what I need to do now here is simply copy no dogs found. And we need to expect that in the document. So if I now save, this test will now pass. So all I now need to do is renders app component component without any data, like so. And now if I save and update the test, so that test should be fine and should be working correctly. I also want to change the created by, so that will now be no dogs found. So no dogs found or oh, now save, that test should pass. So if I close this one off, I also want to add a test for the button. So if I go into button and create a new folder in here named underscore tests, like so, and in here, I'm going to create a new file named button.test.tsx because we will be rendering JSX in here. First of all, I'm going to have a describe block. So describe, and this is going to be button renders correctly using Redux mock store and then comma, and we're going to have a callback. And I'm going to also import describe. And in here, I'm going to render a test. So this first test will be button renders correctly in here and then we are going to render a test within here so if i save and enter a few times i'm going to have some props which are going to be functions in the describe block so they are going to be jest.fn so set images prop and a set is loading prop which are the props being passed down in this component as you can see here so space this out a little bit and then tab this across. So in the test, I want to bring in the initial state. So const initial state is the same as what we have already got on the initial state of the app load. And then again, as we have done with the app, we want to create a mock store and configure that. So if I import the configure store from Redux mock store and paste that in, I also want to import Jest style components and React testing library and Jest DOM. So, so before I want to do anything, I want to clear all the actions for the mock store. So that will be dog store. And then with the mock store, so with Redux mock store, there are methods on here. So what I want to do before every render, I want to clear all the actions. So first off, I want to do that. And then I want to render my component. So I'm just going to bring that in, copy my render block, paste that in. And I also want to import everything from the relevant sections, the theme provider, the button component. So now that is everything rendering here. And then the theme is going to be brought from our lib folder. So now if I save, I now need to import render from testing library react like so. And now if I save, if I look at my error, it says here cannot find module gestile components. So I now need to install gestile components. So if I go in and copy this, control C and then yarn add gestile components like so. And then yarn test, but it's, it will run the tests for me. And you can now see we have two pass tests. What this is doing is essentially rendering the components. So what I now need to do is we're not actually testing for anything. So I now need to screen dot debug the button. And I now also need to import this from testing library react and save. 
and if I scroll up this is what is being returned when we render the component so we have two buttons here the reset and the search docs button so we want to essentially test for them so first thing I want to do is I want to test the reset button so const reset button is equal to screen dot get all by row because there are two buttons with the same row and then this is going to be get all by row of the button and we want to access the second button which is the number one index on the array so what i want to do now is expect reset button to be in the document first of all dot to be in the document like so so if i now save this test should now pass, which it has done. So now we are seeing the reset button in the document. So I'm just going to rename this test to reset button works correctly. So now what I'm going to do just above the reset button is create an expected dispatch here. So when we mimic a dispatch, so we want this to be called. So expected dispatch, which is equal to an object that has a type so when we press the reset button we want to have the action type so we import that from the reducer and the dot so we want to dispatch the reset action on here so if i hover over this it's saying the value is not used so we need to use that now so if i bring in the dispatch after the expect here so we essentially want to dispatch the action so dog store dot dispatch is going to be the expected dispatch and what I want to do is essentially change the state to this here. So if I go on to dog store again and then dot and then we want to get the state. And if I hover over get state, it's of type unknown. So I'm just going to get the state. And then now I want to expect the dog store to equal the initial state that we pass here. So what I also want to do is the initial state here is going to be a breed of African and then the image result is going to be one. So then when we press the reset, we want to reset it to this state here. So now that we've dispatched the action, all we now need to do is test to see if the store dispatched the expected action. So the way we do that is we declare a const a variable so const actions is equal to dog store dot get action and then we want to expect the actions dot to equal an array containing an object so this will take in a type so we're going to pass in the type of action reset like so and if i save we now have the test passing and we are expecting the action type of reset i also want to do another test in here which checks for another action so it shouldn't equal this action so expect actions dot not to equal the type of action type dot and i'm just going to say breed and then we're going to have a payload for this one and then the payload is going to be the string of african which is the type of breed so if i now save the tests are now passing if i was to remove the not and save we now have a fail because the type of set breed is not there but reset breed state is there which is this one so i'm just going to put dot not back in there so that is the way to use redux mock store to render your store and then when we render the store we now have access to methods that we can call from redux mock store and we are not using our own redux app store so underneath all of this i'm going to create a new test in a new describe block and this time we are not going to be using the redux mock store we're going to be using our own redux store so this test will say button renders correctly without redux mock store and i also want to add in here after each after each method we want to clean up after each test sorry and that is imported from react testing library so now if i save i want to create a test block so add the test block in there and this test block shows buttons work and are styled correctly and then in this block we want to render it out so first off i'm going to declare an initial state my own initial state and then once we have declared the initial state, we want to get access to our props. So we want to define these. So again, set images prop and set is loading prop is equal to jest.fn. And then I want to have two actions in there. First action is going to be expected search. And then the second action is going to be the expected reset. And we are importing the types from our reducer. 
like so. And the same here for our reset action. And now all I want to do is render the block. So if I just import and bring in my render. So this time, instead of mocking a new store, I'm going to import the store from my reducer like so. So I'm importing my app store. And now I want to render my app and the test I want to test for is search button works correctly and Redux is connected. So if I do first of all screen.debug and now save, we are getting three passes, but I want to check that I'm getting the right component being rendered, which I am doing. So first off, I want to get access to the search button. So const search button is equal to screen.get all by role. And this will be the button of the first index. So that will be zero in this case. And then what I want to do is I want to expect that the search button should be in the document. So to be in the document like so. Now if I save, this test should now pass, which it has done. I'm also going to remove the screen.debug here. I also want to add a test in here. So expect search button to have text content and that text content is going to be case insensitive. So it's going to contain search dogs. So if I save that test should also pass, which it has done. If I was to spelling typo and save, this test would now fail. As you can imagine, it has done here. So search dogs, whereas we received search dogs. So if I add the A back in there, I also want to test the styling and the background styling for the search button. So if I expect search button to have style, so the style will be loaded in there because we have wrapped it with the theme provider and the global style. So we should expect this pink style to pull through. So if I to have the background color and I'm going to pass in white, and this should fail because the background color is the pink. And the handy tool is if I don't want to inspect this, I just would pass in a random color and then it would say here, this is the color that I was expecting. So now I can just copy this across and paste that in here and save. And then now the test should pass, which it has done. And then I also want to test the color. So I'm just going to copy this, paste this in underneath. And instead of background color, just the color, this should then be returning the white. So the test is failing. I'm getting the correct RGB color. And then I just pass that in here. So if I save, the search button is working correctly. So now I want to simulate a click for the search button. So if I do user event and I want to import the user event from testing library user event. So if I go to the top and it is here, testing library user event, and then I want to simulate a click on this one. So dot click and the element that I want to click is the search button. So now that will trigger a re-render. So now what I want to expect is the app. I'm going to import this from the reducers. And in here, I'm going to pass in the initial state. So what it was previously, which we have defined up here. So init state. And then the action that is going to be dispatched. So in this case for the search, it's going to be the expected search. And then I'm going to check it should equal dot to equal the object. So in the expected search, the action here will be African. So essentially the payload for the breed will be changing. So I need to copy the initial state. So the initial state is empty. And now I want to pass in African like so. So if I now save the new initial state or the new state will be African like so. And the test has passed. If I was to delete a character and save again, it should fail, which it has done. And it tells you here that we should pass in the I is which is what we expected. So I and now save. So that is the search button working correctly. All we now need to do is do the same for the reset button. So if I copy this and essentially do the same again, but in this case, it's going to be the reset button. So all I need to do is select all of these and rename them to reset button. And then this time we want to access the second index of the buttons. And in here, if I now save, this test should now fail. And as you can see here, first off, it has checked here and the test is failing because the text content content is incorrect. So if we change this to reset search 
and now save we should now get the background color failing because it's not the pink color the color they expected is transparent so i'm just going to paste that in here and then the next one to fail will be the color itself so essentially what color i need is the rgb here so if i copy that and paste that in here and now save we are getting the test passing but what i want to do is pass in the expected reset instead this time like so and then the reset will change and update the state to this payload here so if i just copy this and then paste this in here like so so initially the state was empty so if i delete this what will happen is test will now fail and it will fall over at the breed state so if i scroll up as you can see here breeds should be all so if i add all in here and save we now have the test passing so to summarize with the redux mock store essentially what you can do is you can configure a store from redux mock store and mock it with some sort of initial state on there and then when you have declared your variable as whatever it may be so in my case it's the dog store then you have methods that you could call upon you also need to wrap your render with a provider and the only difference is whether you want to pass in your redux store in your app or your mock store from redux mock store then with redux mock store you can test for certain cases like this one where we could get the actions and dispatch the actions if you was to not use your redux mock store then it's simple again we just wrap our app in the provider using our actual redux store that we create in our reducers file from there we can then add our jest tests in to test whether the test is in the document or the certain element is in the document and so on if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and i hope to see you soon